it's Clay Dixon with LearnToBassFish.com. You know, I because of my website and my blog that's primarily designed to help you be more successful in catching fish and teaching you different techniques and things like that, well, as a result of that and seminars that I do and training programs that I do, I get a lot of questions and I thought it would be kind of fun and a little bit different uh, on this particular posting to share with you some of those questions because I'm sure without you know, no doubt about it that many of you watching this now have exactly some of the same very same questions. So hopefully we'll address something in the next few minutes that will uh, you've always wanted to ask but maybe never got uh, a chance to do. Let's start with one of the questions. Uh, what's the difference between a crankbait and a jerkbait? Well, there is a video on the website, learntobassfish.com, that covers jerkbait fishing and different techniques with that type of lure, particularly in the springtime. But the simple answer is, technically, there's really no difference. But as fishermen, because of the way we generally work these long, slender baits, we call them jerkbaits, because more times than not, that is exactly what we do when we work those baits. We jerk them with different cadences versus just simply reeling them in. Now, can we catch fish reeling them in? Yes, uh, but as a rule, these long slender lures with a short lip on them, we call jerk baits because of the method by which we fish them. And I would encourage you to go to the video on the website that talks about the different techniques on learning how to fish one of these jerk baits. A crankbait, on the other hand, as a rule of thumb, you simply throw it out and crank it in. Yes, you do more than that. You stop and pause it, that sort of thing. But basically, you're not typically jerking them. You're throwing them out. The lure's designed to run, usually at a certain depth, and you crank those back in without jerking it and without necessarily a lot of pauses. Now, there are several kind of crankbaits. You have a lipless crankbait, for example, uh, that has no lip on it and can be fished virtually at any depth that you want to fish it. You have shallow running crankbaits, in this case a square bill, meaning that the bill that makes the lure dive is actually square and not rounded, and this is a great bait uh, for bringing it through, for example, any kind of cover. Trees, brush, that sort of thing, it will actually bounce off of those better than the rounded bill will. And these will run anywhere from a foot down to five, four, five, six feet of water. Then when you want to get down deeper in the 10, 12, 14 foot of water, you simply pick up a crankbait that has a bigger lip. The bigger the lip, the deeper it dives. And finally, you can go up, clear up to a really big time Magnum crankbait, uh, like this 10XD, for example, which runs up to 25 feet deep in the right set of circumstances with the right equipment. So you can go anywhere from shallow water with a crankbait to 30 foot of water with a crankbait. But the difference is, typically you're throwing these out and cranking them in. A jerk bait, you're throwing it out and you're usually fishing in, in five or six foot of water or less and, you, and, the, and the name of it is jerk bait for a reason because that's how we usually fish it, by jerking it. How do you determine when you've had enough uh, line on your reel? Well, the answer is uh, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Never fill it all the way to the top of the spool. Uh, I don't care if it's bait casting or spinning. That's going to create a lot of problems for you that you don't need out on the water. I only go up to about an, an eighth of an inch from the top of, of the spool and you'll be fine. There are several videos on my website, learntobassfish.com, that deal with putting line on both spinning, spin cast, and bait casting reels. I really encourage you to go look at those, particularly the, one, the two that deal with uh, putting line on a spinning reel helping you keep those loops and those backlashes out of it. Uh, how do you choose a color for a bait to use? Well, you know, that's a, that's a broad question. It's very, can become more complex than probably what it should be. There are a couple of factors that go into choosing the right lure color. Number one is water clarity. How clear is the water? The, in, in my view, a simple way to look at it is the clearer the water is, the more clear, the deeper you can see in that body of water, the more natural colored lures that you want to use. Shad, crawdad colors, that bluegill colors, that type of thing, to match their forage, whatever they feed on and uh, mostly feed on in that body of water that you're fishing, whether it's a pond or a big reservoir. So the, the, the cleaner, clearer the water, the deeper I can see, the more that I'm going to go to natural colors. 
the darker the stained water is going to be, the more I go to darker colors. If I'm fishing something like a plastic worm or a jig, I want something that silhouettes in that darker water, and dark colors silhouette better. If I'm throwing a crankbait, uh, on the other hand, I'm going to go to more brighter colors, like a chartreuse, for example, so that whatever light might be penetrating that water is going to make this lure much more visible to that fish. So clear water, I'm looking at natural uh, colors. The darker the water gets, the darker the colors, with the exception of crankbaits, I like to throw bright colored crankbaits in dark water. The other thing is in the springtime, I'm looking always in, in the early spring, I'm tending to throw more crawdad color bait colors because that's what the primary food uh, uh, forage is early, early in the springtime when they're moving into spawn. Now, that changes as the, as the spawn finishes and they go, most of the fish move out into deeper water, shad typically become the number one food source. So now I get away from the, that color of lure, the crawdad color lure, I tend to go more with um, shad color lures. Now, that said, um, there are some bodies of water, for example, uh, uh, Table Rock, Lake of the Ozark, some of those lakes in the Midwest, and, and really all over the country, that have a color that is conducive to that body of water that stands out above all other colors. Now, why is that? I don't really know, and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I don't need, that, that's a class I don't need to attend. I mean, at the end of the day, if there's a colored lure on a particular body of water that tends to be the favorite, you know, most successful color, then that's the color that I'm gonna go with. There's no sense in, you know, trying to force feed something to the fish if the fish themselves over time on a certain body of water have told us, no, these are the color preferences that I like and the ones that I'll hit, then those are the ones I'm gonna stick with as well.